Welcome to the second edition of the 15 minute quarter. Uh, according to a recent study by Amplify Media, approximately 26% of all podcasts have just one episode, which means we are already ahead of the game and it's just our second quarter in. We, uh, each quarter, we like to put out some commentary that we think our clients and their friends might be interested in to know what's going on in the market. And inflation has been at the top of most people's minds. And so it's been at the top of our minds for the last year. So what better time to talk about it than when everyone else is too. And so this quarter's topic, everything is bigger everywhere because it's not just for Texas anymore. As usual, the first thing we need to do is get the legal stuff out of the way. It's a little too soon for me to recycle lawyer jokes. So we're just gonna keep this simple. The opinions in here are mine, and the performance data is based on indices. So it may not exactly line up with other sources, but we try really, really hard to be accurate. Finally, please keep in mind, this is for informational purposes only, and we do not want you to sue us because you heard me make a joke about GameStop in our last video and put all of your life savings into it. For those of you who politely ignored that first video, my name is Nicholas Brown. I am one of the three partners here at Granite Harbor Advisors. My area of focus is on portfolio management because it's always been a great interest of mine. It's what my background is in and because we couldn't talk the other two partners into doing it. Um, I hold both the chartered financial analyst and certified financial planner designations, which just means that my uh, summer continuing education requirements are twice as arduous and excruciating as other people's. So with all the introductions and legal stuff out of the way, let's get on with the real reason why most of you are watching this, which is hopefully to get some insight over what happened last quarter and our thoughts moving forward. In the news, the first half of the quarter, everyone was excited about trying to find our way back to normal as economies opened up and we started to make a dent in the jobs that we lost during the pandemic. But good news does not always sell as well as bad news. And so market headlines quickly turn to, uh-oh, what if all of this is too good too fast? And to be fair, there are some valid points to that. All right. We saw inflation markers pop up at the end of the quarter, uh, including new home prices and just home prices in general, as well as the Fed start to talk about potential interest rate increases. The Fed has also spent a significant part of the quarter telling people that the inflation markers we saw were just trans transitory, they're not really here to stay, and then they've spent the last couple of weeks telling you as consumers, just kidding, it might be here a little longer than we thought. And that's why inflation has become such a hot topic. And since it's such a hot topic, we want to spend some time talking about what it is, why it's so important, and what to do about it. Because if you Google the definition of inflation, you're going to get something close to this. Inflation is the sustained upward movement of price levels of goods and services in the economy. I like something that's a little bit simpler, such as uh, stuff gets more expensive, so you need more cash to buy the same stuff. The reason why it's so important is because inflation typically does not occur in a sudden, really noticeable way. It sneaks up on you. Think of inflation as like the bad guy in a horror movie. You're uh, looking around in a dimly lit basement because you were minding your own business. The next thing you know, you walk into a room with no doors and bam, game over. Meanwhile, the entire audience is going, are you kidding me? It's 2021. You don't have a cell phone? What were you doing there in the first place? That's inflation. It can be a silent killer to a lot of investors' portfolios. That's because it's not an expense you can directly see. You just feel it gradually over time. But that does not make it any less real or important. In fact, if inflation were to average 2% per year, it could be one of, if not the biggest expense a portfolio faces, more so than investment fees and taxes. However, unlike our horror movie metaphor, inflation simply can't be avoided by making sure your car maintenance is up to date before you go on a road trip through an isolated area. 
all of us have to interact with the modern economy, and therefore all of us have to be concerned in one way or another with inflation. So what do we do about it? In short, our boring but extremely effective answer is that we believe a well-disciplined investment approach is one of the best ways to handle inflation. So one of the first things on the list, make sure we have a well-diversified portfolio that's flexible enough to adjust for inflation as it becomes a greater and greater risk. But more specifically, some common asset classes investors already own can be a good hedge against inflation. One of the main reasons people invest in stocks and equities is for their ability to outpace inflation. Other types of assets like treasury inflation protected securities, or commonly known as TIPS, real estate, commodities, even T-bills can help hedge, or in the case of T-bills, track along with inflation. But almost as important as knowing what to do is knowing what not to do. It's not uncommon to see stock market volatility when some negative news gets published. And you might see some equity pullback. But if inflation is a key concern, and we've already discussed that it should be, that is not a reason to sell out of equities and get rid of the asset class we're currently using to address inflation in the first place. And just like there are asset classes that can handle inflation really well, there are other asset classes that don't, chief among them being cash. If inflation means it takes more cash to buy less stuff, you don't want to be holding too much of the thing that buys less stuff. That doesn't mean that cash is not important and that it doesn't play a key role in a household's finances. It's just important to keep our cash thresholds at an appropriate level. This is another reason why diversification is so important. And how you diversify is really based on your unique set of circumstances. For those of you that prefer the written word, we do have an article about this on our website, www.graniteharbor.com. It's about this very topic. It does kind of repeat everything I just said, but it does so a little bit more poetically than I can say it. Uh, I'll also take this opportunity to shamelessly plug the other great content that we have on there, um, which many of our clients have been finding useful. If you found this video, then you'll probably notice we have been putting out other videos right alongside it. So now that we have a little bit more insight into why we own the stuff that we own, let's talk about how it performed last quarter. The second quarter was fairly positive across the board from equity markets to fixed income markets. We saw strong performance in the equity markets, uh, particularly with a rebound in global real estate. Uh, we also saw a positive performance in the fixed income markets after the US bond market quietly had the worst quarter on record since January 2001. When barn markets are positive, it actually means the market interest rate came down slightly, which is in contrast to what the Fed thinks it may do in the coming periods. For those of you who like to see a lot more numbers on a page, here's a ranking of the returns for the second quarter of some common indexes. As you can see, US real estate led the way, followed by small cap emerging market. Uh, at the bottom of the pile were bonds with everything else in between. One key consideration for this slide in this ranking is these rankings are going to change quarterly. It is absolutely impossible for someone to guess with any type of certainty where an index on this list is going to fall before the quarter actually starts. If they could tell you, they would be the richest person in the world uh, and you would have already known about them. That's the reason why this list is important is because it starts to give us some insight into what investors should expect from their portfolios and what the opportunity set looked like. Backing off from the detail and more to like a 30,000 foot view, this slide simply shows what a hypothetical mix of stocks and bonds would have done. And I love this slide because it is packed with information in a really easy to read way. First, we have a list of hypothetical portfolios and what their quarterly performance was. Then we have the exact same list, just with some longer time periods along the way, all the way up to 10 years. To break this down, the 100% stock portfolio is meant to represent if you owned almost every stock in the world in its proportional amount. This is how it would have performed. 7.5% for the quarter, and 12.5% year to date. Now let's face some realities. 
it's impossible to own every stock in the world in its proportional amount because some stocks are so small or so new or changes come so fast. So this performance number really represents an index that tracks most, but not all the stocks. Said another way, it's close enough. And it's the high end of our risk return spectrum. You take high risk, you get high return, but you also have to live through all the downturns along the way, which most people just can't do for one reason or another. So these portfolios underneath the 100% stocks are just more conservative. Instead of having 100% of our account invested in stocks, only 75% or 50% of our account is invested in stock, and the rest of it is invested in bonds, those other assets we talked about a few minutes ago. So you can see an account with, that was 75% stocks and 25% bonds would have done about 5.6% for the quarter and be up 9.3% for the year, while a 50-50 portfolio would have done about 3.7% for the quarter and be up 6.1% per year. Now, individual results may vary. <laughs> These are not numbers that you're gonna hit right on the money, and most people are not gonna be allocated with exactly these percentages. They should just be guides, so that when you evaluate your personal performance, you have something in mind to work with. As always, if anything I've said sparks some interest and you wanna talk about it some more, please do not hesitate to reach out to our office via phone, email, website, carrier pigeon, Morse code, whatever your preferred method of communication is. If you do end up on our website, www.granitharbor.com, you'll notice the words knowledge, confidence, discipline at the very top. One of the many reasons those are there is because we love answering questions about this stuff or any other financial topic. So please do not hesitate to reach out. Also, as I said before, you'll find other articles like the one on inflation and videos by clicking on the menu button in the top right hand corner, uh, as well as any new stuff that we put out, which we've been doing pretty regularly. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen. We look forward to hearing from those of you that would like to have a deeper conversation and have a pleasant day.